I was born with a genetic condition called cystic fibrosis, and it's progressive. So it gets worse over time. And I came to a point where I needed a double lung transplant. And my doctor sort of said to me, you know, you have two choices. You can get the transplant or we can help you die with dignity, is what they called it. And I didn't like either of those options. So I found Dr. Joe because I was looking for something better. At the Cancun event in December, I was in a wheelchair and I had already managed to get off the oxygen and I was still having trouble walking. Walking was really hard because there was a lot of pain in my joints from losing a lot of cartilage when I was sick. And we come to kind of the end of that week of Cancun and I was kind of spent. I had used up all my energy, I was in a lot of pain. And the second to last day, we have this evening walking meditation. And I was very upset and I did not want to do it. And so I'm standing there, because that's kind of a rule that I made for myself, because I always start a walking meditation standing, not in my wheelchair. And I was kind of wrestling with myself. I was like, I don't know if I can do this without my cane. And so I was kind of like going back and forth, like, I don't want to do it without my cane, but I don't think I can. And I hear Dr. Dr. Joe's voice in my head, and he says, how would nobility walk? And I kind of got a little mad at myself, and I was just like, not with a f- cane. And I made up my mind right then that I was gonna, I was gonna walk. I wasn't gonna touch my cane. I wasn't gonna fall down either, and I didn't care if I didn't make it 10 feet down the beach. I didn't care if my steps were an inch long. I was gonna walk and I was gonna put intention into every single step. At the end of the meditation, I was done. I was just done. And my fiance had to come find me and carry me back to my wheelchair. And he's wheeling me back to the room that night. And in my head, I'm just like, I don't know how I'm gonna do tomorrow. I just don't know. But we go to bed and The final meditation of the event was body electric, which is a two-parter. You start inside and then move outside for a walk. So I'm in the first part of that meditation and we're watching the kaleidoscope and I'm just kind of like letting anything happen because I was done resisting. I was just like, whatever. And as we lay down, I start convulsing and I'm still wrestling it, wrestling with it in my head. I'm thinking like, stop acting like a fool. You know, you know, cut it out. You're just doing this for attention. But then the other side of me is like, whose attention am I trying to get? Um, so I'm convulsing and I'm like, this is weird. And I'm really confused about it. And I'm, as we're walking down to the beach for the, the second part, I'm still confused. And I'm thinking like, what just happened? And I'm standing there and we're listening to the meditation and I'm not paying attention to Dr. Joe's voice now at all. I'm just trying to reason it out in my head. And I start to go, okay, clearly there was energy going on and it stands to reason that it's probably still there. And so I just kind of start talking to myself and I go like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna point myself in a direction and I'm gonna let the energy take me there. I'm just gonna look ahead and say, go. And I'm not gonna have to do any of the work. The energy's gonna do the work for me and I'm gonna trust it, that it's not gonna hurt me. I'm gonna trust it, that I don't have to try. And open my eyes, we get ready to go and I just look straight ahead and I'm like, all right, go. And I just go. (laughs) I was walking faster than everybody around me. I was just walking and like up and down the beach. I made like a really long trip up and down that beach and I didn't, I didn't need a cane, I didn't need oxygen. And when my fiance comes find me at the end, he's like, do you want a piggyback ride? And I was like, no, I, I think I'm okay. And we get back to my wheelchair and he starts to kind of set it up for me to get back in. And I was like, no, no, I kind of want to keep standing. And we go through the rest of the day and I'm not really getting tired and there's no more pain in my legs. And I'm not really getting out of breath. And so Cancun's a huge hotel. And we were walking all up and down there, all up and down there. 
And the entire rest of the day, I didn't need it. I didn't need the chair. He was just pushing nobody beside me. And I didn't need it the next day either, it, or the day after that, and I haven't gotten back in it since. So that's how I ended Cancun, was no wheelchair, no oxygen. And now here I am in San Diego, and I'm really starting to learn that I don't have to figure out how to heal myself. Because I used to think that I had to copy Dr. Joe and like rebuild my lungs in my head like he did his spine. That's not in my head about my lungs. I don't know how they're put together. I don't know what they're made of. But I do know who I want to be. And the future self, her body, already does this stuff automatically. I don't have to worry about doing something. I just have to change who's doing it. And then it'll just happen.